Welcome to the SVG TV News for Monday, June 5th. I am Khalil Cato with the details. There are more people working in St. Vincent and the Grenadines now than at any other time in the history of the country. This is according to Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez on WeFM's Issues at Hand program on Sunday. Referencing data from the National Insurance Services, the NIS, Prime Minister Gonzalez said the proxy data will indicate that when the Unity Labour Party government took office in 2001, there were 30,000 active registrations at the NIS for employees and self-employed people. But now there are over 42,000 plus workers registered. Not talking employers now, self-employed persons, that's own account workers, a man who working for himself. And employees, just over 30,000. By 2019, the year before COVID, was about 41,000. It is now 42,000 plus. Yeah, Joel, there is no carpenter, no mason, no electrician, no plumber, no tileman, no general construction worker who wants work in St. Vincent and the today can't get it. In fact, what is happening? Farm laborers are leaving the farm, those who have general construction skills. I'm going to work construction, making it difficult for farmers to get workers right now in this country. The Prime Minister further outlined that most people stand to benefit from more job opportunities from the new projects currently on stream. Watch it, what is happening. All it is happening all around you. <laughs> Nothing is happening. And you have a $550 million hotel being built, Sanders down there, which is being built. And... You have 350, 370 Vincentians working down there, and the numbers will increase as you get more to the finishing. And they intend to hand over, the contractors intend to hand over the building the end of the, this year or January. They were hoping for a March um, opening. I'm trying to push them for a February opening, and I'll tell you why. Um, and they say they will see what they can do and so on and so forth. That's happening there, you know. They, 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 and when it's complete, it's 1,200 workers going to be working there, you know. I want the farmers to hear me and the fishermen. You have to sell them food. And you have to sell them fish, you know. You have to sell them agricultural produce and fish. You have to sell them provisions, you have to sell them fruits, you have to sell them vegetables, you have to sell them all sorts of stuff coming from the farm. The dredging process conducted from Argyle to the Port Modernization Project site in capital Kingstown concluded on Saturday. Prime Minister Gonzalez said that after laying out about 16 acres of land or sand, the dredging ship has left SVG and will possibly return after the installation of piles and barriers at the port project site. Prime Minister Gonzalez said the senior vice president of Acon Construction visited him, visited him recently along with other professionals from within the government service and he received a report as to the work on the port modernization project thus far and elements of what is to come. From the state administration, Director General of Finance and Planning, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Ports, um, Yvette Pompey and so forth because I wanted to get a report from Acon. I've received also a report from um, Linsky from the Project Management Implementation Unit, from Linsky Douglas, who is a splendid um, professional, so to Laura Anthony Brown. And we got a report as to the work thus far and elements of what is what's going to happen going forward. As you know, now that you have the, the dredging and the filling of the land for the eight, 16 acres or thereabouts, what they're going to do, they're going to drive, put in the piles now. Okay. And they're going to put, when they put the, bar, the, the piles, you have to put the, the, the barriers, you know, the, the, to hold, mm -hmm. they're compacting the sand. Yes. And it, to hold the sand, very interesting. I was told by um, the senior vice president, Marty Harris, that in some, some technologies, what they use, they put up, the piles and the and the, the containing fence, the steel, you know, and pour the sand inside. Now they have done the reverse. The reverse. Mm -hmm. 
Um, uh, so the, 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 the dredge may well come back um, later after they have put in the piles, after they've put in the piles and the barriers to see if there's anything which they have to dredge out as a, as a part of the mopping up operations okay. to complete that particular process. Okay. There were several concerns from fisher folk and environmentalists about the impact on marine life where the materials were dredged from off the coast of Argyle. However, Prime Minister Gonzales said there were no problems with the process. And as I said, and I specifically asked Linsky Douglas and <laughs> Laura Anthony Brown if there have been if, if any complaints have been raised by the consultants, that is to say sell horn of any environmental issue, no. By the Caribbean Development Bank, no. In fact, the Caribbean Development Bank environmental specialists had come in because they will do their monitoring. They're quite satisfied with everything that is going on. Linsky and Laura themselves are satisfied because the, the, the science indicated what, what we are doing is proper for us to do and that persons who are making other comments, those comments are not properly founded. In, in science, in reality. Prime Minister Gonzalez further noted that local spending on the project thus far amounts to $40 million. Local spend is about $40 million thus far. Oh, okay. okay. Um, the, including that would be cost of materials and supplies and the like, in addition to labor costs. And is that number on target uh, in terms of what is what's projected? Yes, this is this is they're they're moving along well. They they show me that the their original deadline of May June that they will accomplish that, barring any adverse weather conditions um, in this hurricane season. But the meteorologists advise the Colorado State University and and other predictors. Um, say we are going to have a near normal, just slightly below normal um, hurricane, Atlantic hurricane season. Of course, you only need one hurricane to hit you. So the, the statistic of about normal or below normal, in, in, there's still the attendant risk. They're only, they're only saying that it is less likely. But we're going to have storms. Um, and they... they they said that if there is any problem, they would they would be able to manage it. Okay. You know, they have that, all that is factored into their own calculation of risks. The reenactment of the arrival of Indians to St. Vincent and the Grenadines some 162 years ago was held yesterday at Indian Bay as part of activities to commemorate Indian Arrival Day, observed here annually since 2007 on June 1st. Sunday's reenactment event, hosted by the SVG Indian Heritage Foundation, saw a boat arriving at Indian Bay with persons dressed in Indian wear, followed by a mock registration and dispatch to the various estates. An official ceremony was held as part of the activities on Sunday, which was attended for the first time by both the Prime Minister and Leader of the Opposition. President of the SVG Indian Heritage Foundation, Junior Bacchus, said it is important for everyone to remember what caused Indians, more specifically the first group of East Indians, to get to the shores of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. You could recall, following the abolition of slavery, there was a demand for workers because the recently freed blacks were not prepared to continue on the various estates throughout the, the region. And so it was the planters requested from their their um, mother country, which was, at that time was the United Kingdom in England, to get workers here. And England was, has, India was a colony of England at the time. And we know that even before us, the Portuguese were brought here, and then they realized maybe we need to get the Indians to be part of the, the labor force. So indentureship started even before the Indians came with the Portuguese, followed by the Indians. And the first ship, the Travancore, landed in the area of Edinburgh with approximately 
258 people who left India but arrived with 260 at Edinburgh at that time on the 4th of June. Bacchus said right up to 1882, the Indians who came to SVG as indentured servants were suffering on the various estates and decided to stage a protest demanding a return to India. He said while many returned, some stayed and made SVG their home. And on the 7th of October 1882, about 50 Indians left uh, their various posts in Argyle and all the other estates coming down and journeyed their way into Kingston to protest the condition that they were facing and to demand that their contracts be honored. They actually requested to return to India. So following that period when they were able to get the air of the, the administrator at the time, they, they were, we were able to get about 1,141 of them returning to India. Others went across many of these Caribbean islands and the remainder remain here. And most of us here are here are descendants of those who remain on the various estates or beside the various estates. So many of them left the estates. They settled in places like Rosebank, Richland Park, um, up in the north in Langley Park, in, in, um, in Park Hill, yes. Acres. Acres, Calder. You call the names. You know where most, a lot of the Indians settled. And we were, we, we were able to develop ourselves from that period. And many of you are here, third, fourth, fifth generation of Indians, must recognize the importance of that day, the 1st of June. I want to all... Bacchus used the opportunity to express gratitude to SVG's former Minister of Tourism and Culture, Renee Batiste, for her guidance and leadership in piloting a bill through Parliament which received unanimous support from the government and opposition to declare June 1st as Indian Arrival Day. We are for the government, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, for recognizing the importance of that day. So, we got it recognized from Parliament in March of 2007, and since then we come here to engage in the reenactment um, experience and to recognize and celebrate Indian Arrival Day. We didn't do it for the last two years because of COVID, but here we are today once again um, recognizing the importance of this day to all of us. The Indians are a very important part of this, this St. Vincentian community. We are able to contribute significantly in all spheres of life. We have people in business, in farming, in medicine, in law. We have Indians serving in all fields. So we, we, we know there's one special thing about Indians, they say. They say the Indians have a way of, 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 of you know, hiding their money under their, their pillows. And they, they, they are people who don't spend a lot, right? They don't spend a lot. They, they are able to organize and, and, and develop themselves and were able to invest in businesses. The president of the Indian Heritage Foundation also noted that after two years of hard work, they were able to launch on Indian Arrival Day last Thursday, June 1st, a genealogy section on their website, which members can use to find their family members and trace their family, or, their family origins back to India. In his address at Sunday's ceremony, Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez reflected on the journey of the Indian people from the subcontinent to the Caribbean, particularly to St. Vincent and the Grenadines in the 1860s, noting that Indians were taken to Guyana and Trinidad much earlier. PM Gonzalez said what the Indians have retained over the years which can be seen throughout the Caribbean region, is extraordinary discipline, an extraordinary propensity for hard work and thrift. In that regard, they have shared that quality with other minorities throughout the world. And the Indian family structure, like indeed the traditional African family structure, is one of solidarity and community. But slavery subverted, in every turn, the family structure of the African people. The, African, the enslaved Africans put one father somewhere else, a mother somewhere else, and, and so on and so forth. It's, a, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting study which is there to be made. And the Indians very much retain the love for bright colors. The 
You see, in an earlier period, and still to some extent, Indian homes, homes with Indian people living in them, they are very bright colors. They wear very bright fabrics. It's, it's, it's interesting because those things, however much you have had a creolization, there are these, not just residuals, they, these are things which are still alive in people. And of course, critically, the foods, the use of curry. Curry goat is now a Caribbean dish. And that's a big contribution from the Indian community. Roti. I always tell people that arguably the best roti in, in this country or anywhere I find I, throughout the Eastern Caribbean is by a black family which run a restaurant. VJs. And of course, I always ask them to make a comrade special. So you, 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 you can't go and buy a comrade special. No. The comrade special is reserved for the comrade. That means plenty meat and not so much potato. <laughs> <laughs> and these are very interesting um, elements which have gone into the mainstream. And so the Indian community has borrowed, adapted, and adopted. And so too, they have influenced um, our Caribbean civilization and a part of it. Leader of the opposition, Dr. Godwin Friday, said Indian Arrival Day is an important occasion to celebrate and to seek to preserve the heritage and important role that persons of East Indian descent played and to continue to and continue to do here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. We saw familiar people getting off the boat and they were coming ashore on familiar territory. But put yourself back hundred and something years to those people who came here for the first time coming such a long distance to such a far off place never knowing if they're ever going to go back and they're stepping ashore to something uncertain and wondering maybe some of them thinking what am I doing here how are we going to survive in this place and of course they didn't just survive <coughs> they have done tremendously well over the years. We, this is a day for us to honor the contribution of East Indians to the community and the rich tapestry of Vincentian life and culture. It also today offers us a moment to reflect on the importance not just of our history, but of going forward, of the importance of embracing diversity in our present day, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Diversity, differences, is not a problem to be solved, as some people seem to think. It is rather a source of strength for us because it enables us to draw on experiences, the strength of various cultures because the things that have survived are the things that are strong in each culture to help to prepare us as we go forward. It is also enriching for the life of the people here. October 7th will be celebrated as Indian Heritage Day. The SVG Embassy of the Republic of China, Taiwan, and the U.S. Embassy in Bridgetown will co-host a Global Cooperation and Training Framework seminar here in SVG tomorrow at the Kingstown Baptist Church from 9 to 11 a.m. The seminar will be held under the theme, Trending to Tomorrow's Talents Today, Technical and Vocational Training Tools and Techniques for Developing States in the Caribbean and Latin America. On the API's Man in SVG program today, the ROC's ambassador to St. Vincent and the Grenadines, His Excellency Peter Shali Lan, said the GCTF seminar is focused on training on vocational training and vocational education. Uh, means the global cooperation and training framework. It was established back in 2015 um, by the government of the United States and Taiwan. Um, the purpose of the GCTF framework 
is to uh, establish a platform to share Taiwan's expertise and experiences with other partners so that new partnership could be uh, established. Uh, right now, um, the framework has four full partners, which is United States, Taiwan, Japan, and Australia. So every year, um, the four partners sit down together and review um, the potential topics and the potential locations all over the world and to select some of the locations to have this kind of seminar and invite all other potential partners to participate. So this year, St. Vincent and Grenadines was selected uh, and the main thing is tending the talent today, uh, telling, uh, tending the talent tomorrow today. Ambassador Land said projects like the on-site program and the GCTF seminar will aid in job opportunities for many Vincentians while boosting the economy of SVG. We certainly believe that through those projects, um, not only that we can uh, grant people uh, job opportunities, employment in the future, but also uh, uh, boost the, the, the economy as a whole. And this is uh, one of the very successful story in terms of vocational training and vocational education. But don't forget that GCTF framework was only established in 2015. So at the beginning, most of the physical seminars was held in Taiwan, uh, partner with others. But starting 2019, we start to look for good partners overseas, try to expand um, those uh, seminars globally. Um, so far we have, we've had 55 seminars and over than three, uh, 6,300 participants already participated. Uh, so remember two, 2019 and then the pandemic came. So I, I think this is a great opportunity now that we can finally put the pandemic a little bit behind and then we can have those physical uh, seminars so you can have guest speakers coming in and um, witness uh, the real achievement on the ground in St. Vincent and Grenadines. The Fire Empress has emerged winner of the, of the 2023 Queen of Calypso competition held at the Russell's Auditorium on Saturday. She sang her way to victory with her song Price of Neglect. Second place went to Felicia Nubian Empress Alexander with her song Reckless Driving. And third place went to former Queen of Calypso, Chanel McKenzie, with her song, Who to Blame. The other competitors who took part in the Queen of Calypso competition were Cleopatra, Lady D, Selena, Sheena Collis, Marvo, Collection, and Samantha Martin. In an interview today on the API's Morning SVG program, Fire Empress gave an overview of her winning song, Price of Neglect. But the reason no children now straying The roles that the village was playing Now taken by Facebook and internet Big threat in this digital circus It seems we are stuck Our children now focus on Instagram and TikTok No more community spirit Even family time long gone children's digits on an iPhone or Samsung. So what's wrong with Caribbean youths? Our leaders now cry. But like we fret to face the truth, we keep living a lie. For me, I think nowadays, yes, they do say that every 10 years the cycle changes, right? Things change. But for me, it's hard waking up and not knowing who your neighbor children are. It's hard to wake up wanting a cup of sugar and you're afraid to ask your neighbor for it because why? You're afraid she go down the road and she talk about it, these kind of things. Um, when we have adults, because I didn't only speak about the children, because they spring off from young ones into adults. Most times when we have somebody who rape or who blows up something, who decides to, to, to do something drastic, most times when you look at these people, these are people who are angry they're angry because of something that happened let's say rape a man might be angry because yo nothing ain't really getting up i'm not getting a good response when i have anything with a girlfriend so the easiest thing to do is to rape 
you know and we don't tend to realize where these things come from where they stem from it is deep it is deep and i just wish that we could go back the african proverbs who now here go feel every day bucket i go well one day the bottom go drop out um one of my big proverbs was the children when they're looking for attention they will burn the whole village down just to feel its warmth if you cannot understand that then you need to go and listen to my calypso listen to the lyrical content of it and pick the sense out of it the queen of calypso is encouraging other calypsonians to invest in their music noting that that they will not be retiring from calypso music anytime soon invest in what you want to do I keep saying it all the time, but it seems as though my words just fall on the ground. Some people, it's easy to say, oh, we don't have the money. You don't have it, but you want to make it. Around carnival time, there's a lot of money at stake, and you want a piece of the price. And if you do want that, you're going to have to invest. And I hear people say, oh, it's time for Fire Empress to hang up. I am not hanging up and sit by and let Calypso go down the drain. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to just sit by and just let somebody take a crown from me. I am going to fight for it. Uh, you know? I ain't here that it's time, Yeah, man, it's time for one. Chanel and, and Fire to hang up hang up the, the, the thing and, and, and give the younger ones a chance. Come on. Hmm. You, the, nothing was given to us. We had to fight for what we have. And of course, if you want to come now and get that, you're going to have to fight. And president of the Calypso Association, Earl Caba Bennett, who on NBC Radio's Face to Face program today, said that everyone has a responsibility to ensure that Calypso lives on in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. That soca has bigger, a higher prominence, more prominence than our own creation, Raka Soka. Mm -hmm. But we have, and I have a British responsibility, and all of us love Calypso, as the custodians, as the guardians of Calypso, do everything with no power to ensure that Calypso lives on, because this art form must not be measured share in share economic terms. And if you do that, you look down on it. But we must remember our African foreparents brought this art form to the Caribbean, and therefore it is priceless, must be treasured, must be cherished. All right. Bennett said thus far, the 2023 Calypso season has been receiving great reviews in terms of the music and encouraged Vincentians to support Vinci Mass, which he said is identified as one of the safest and affordable carnivals in the Caribbean. Of a variety, as fire just indicated, it is the hottest carnival in the Caribbean. But more importantly for me, it is probably the safest carnival in the Caribbean, uh, mm -hmm. in the entire world and also the most affordable. The yeah. prices, the admission prices for Vinci Mass compared to any other country. If you think I am just trying to embellish, I'm trying to make our country look good, our CDC, just do your research, and then you come back and say, whether well, a lot, I have been fabricating, I have been embellishing. So again, come out in your numbers when you support Vinci Mass, you support culture. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the people, nothing did not ground in their culture. And when you support your culture, by extension, you support your blessed and beloved plural nation called St. Vincent Grandines. That gold, blue, and green. Whatever, what, 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 what the anthem says? What the future you bring? Our fate is you. Mm -hmm. Yes. As a people, we need to stick together. And coordinator of rural carnivals, Dylan Morris, said they have met several challenges executing some of the rural carnival activities this year. Morris said some of the challenges include sponsorship and competing with other carnival events being held on the same dates. Challenges are sponsorship. The rural committees do not get, at times, enough sponsorship, enough of the business houses, you know, operating within these villages in the rural areas, coming forward to sponsor so that has been one of the main challenges we've also been faced with high security costs i must hasten to add though that the police have been doing a very good job i mean we get their support all the time but the costs are tremendous so sometimes we may need to get a sponsor to sponsor security specifically for an event okay. because those are really really large costs high costs 
we also have some challenges with some venues, you know, in the different areas and so on. But um, we had a meeting with Prime Minister Gonzalez, Minister Stevenson, persons from the National Sports Council <coughs> and the CDC. Met a few weeks ago and we, we managed to iron out a lot of these problems. So a lot of the venues have now become available for, for the events. Also speaking on the challenges faced by mass bands during Carnival, PRO of the Carnival Bands Incorporated, Fernando Sirio, said that the Carnival Bands Association is doing its best to help these 17 mass bands with the challenges faced. Well, we have about 17 members. We just had a new one that came in, that's Energy. That's a new mass band that just came to the, to the fold. Um, what we do, that band will not be judging it will just be um, doing a presentation for Vinci Mass 2020. Basically, um, most of the bands will tell you they're not a small band because um, a small band is a um, hundred from a hundred and less, right? So, so they would say they are big band because most of them would have 120, 150, 200. But it's something we we have on the table to discuss um, moving forward and to see what could be done. Because I know some bands don't want to merge. They want to have the, the seat. Right? They want to know that, okay, tribes come in, um, whatever band is coming, and they want to be on their own. right? Although there are challenges, but they would still want to be on their own instead of merging. But that is something we have on the table to discuss. Benefits. Well, there are plenty of benefits. Um, for example, um, if there is a problem with one mass band, all the mass bands would come together to try to solve the problem to try to help where there's financial problems, right? Because um, CBI, we do raise funds, okay, when we can, and whatever finance that we have, we would help another mass band, right? Um, in terms of materials, sourcing materials overseas, that is something we try to help each other with. 